Today's video is another episode of my series in which we discover the ancestry of famous European royals. In today's episode, we will analyze the ancestors of the last German emperor, Wilhelm II. He reigned from 1888 to 1918 when he was forced to abdicate at the end of the First World War. Wilhelm left Germany a few days later and went into exile in the Netherlands. He would never step on German soil again and died in 1941. To start off this video, we will look at his parents' life and marriage. Wilhelm's father was the 99-day emperor, Frederick III. He was born on October 18, 1831, at the New Palace in Potsdam, Germany. Frederick's early years were marked by the liberal uprisings in the German monarchies and the troubled marriage of his parents. His childhood was therefore very lonely, two of his only close confidants being his sister and his uncle. Frederick received a military education as well as a classical education. He was described as a talented student becoming fluent in three languages. Frederick is praised for his leadership skills which he showed off during the Second Schleswig, Austro-Prussian and Franco-Prussian War. Despite serving in the army himself, Frederick did not agree with warfare. He became a liberal-minded prince, much to the demise of his conservative father. On October 25, 1858, Frederick married Victoria, the Princess Royal. She was the eldest daughter of Queen Victoria and Prince Albert. As early as 1851, plans began to betroth the two. Frederick lastly proposed to Victoria in 1855, after he had met her a few times. Victoria was born on November 21, 1840 at Buckingham Palace. As her mother was the reigning queen, her father, the prince consort, took care of her education. At the age of only 18 months, she began to learn French. Later, she would also study Greek and Latin. She was educated in arithmetic, geography, and history. Her father personally taught the young princess politics and philosophy. Through her father, Victoria gained liberal views, which she would later share with her husband, Frederick. A little over a year after the wedding, Victoria gave birth to their first child, Wilhelm. The delivery was extremely difficult. The baby was in a breech position and both the life of mother and child were in danger. Eventually, both lives were saved, but Wilhelm's left arm was permanently injured. Seven more children followed in the next 14 years. Frederick became the Prussian king as well as the German emperor in 1888. However, he never had the chance to spread his liberal views. He died only 99 days after his ascension to the throne. Victoria, the Dowager Empress, only survived him by 13 years. She died in 1901 of breast cancer. We are now continuing with Wilhelm II's paternal grandparents, Wilhelm I and Princess Augusta of Saxe Weimar Eisenach. Wilhelm I was born on March 22, 1797, at the Crown Prince's Palace in Berlin. He was christened William Frederick Louis. As he was the second son of his parents, nobody thought that he would one day succeed to the throne. Wilhelm received an education suitable to his position. At the age of only 12, he was made an officer in the Prussian army. The prince served in the army where he fought against Napoleon during the coalition wars. Contemporaries describe Wilhelm as a brave soldier. Even after the Napoleonic Wars, Wilhelm remained in the army. After a relationship with Polish noblewoman and cousin Eliza Recheville, Wilhelm married Princess Augusta of Saxe Weimar Eisenach. Augusta was born on September 30, 1811, making her over 14 years younger than Wilhelm. At the time of their wedding, on June 11, 1829, Wilhelm was perhaps still in love with his first love, Eliza, and only thought of Augusta to have an excellent personality. Above all, it was Wilhelm's father who forced him into a marriage with a suitable wife. It was crucial that Wilhelm, who was the heir presumptive, made a dynastic marriage, as his elder brother and his wife had been married for years without having any children. 
After their wedding, Augusta had an easy start at the Prussian court, but soon began to be bored. She liked Wilhelm and hoped for a happy marriage, while Wilhelm thought she lacked a femininity. Three years after their marriage, their first child, Frederick, was born. After another seven years, their second child, Louise, was born. On January 2, 1861, Wilhelm became King of Prussia with Augusta as his consort. In 1871, the unification of Germany followed and Wilhelm was elected as German Emperor. In the next decades, there were several assassination attempts made on Wilhelm's life. He lastly died in 1888, at the old age of 90. Augusta only outlived him by two years. They were buried next to each other at Castle Charlottenburg. Now let us continue with the first pair of paternal great-grandparents. Here we find Frederick William III of Prussia and his wife Louise of mecklenburg strelitz Frederick William was born on August 3, 1770 in Potsdam. He grew up away from his parents, which was nothing unusual back then. He received a classic military education and obtained his lieutenancy in 1784. He took part in the campaigns against France from 1792 to 1794. During this time, in December 1793, he married Duchess Louise of mecklenburg strelitz Louise was born in March 1776 in Hanover. Through her father, she was a niece to Queen Charlotte of Great Britain. Louise's grandmother took care of her and her siblings' education, raising them in a simple way. They made their own clothes and learned French. Louise, in fact, became so fluent in French that she neglected her German. She was known for her generosity to the point that she got in trouble for giving away too much money. In early 1793, Frederick William and Louise got engaged and their wedding was celebrated in December of the same year. Two days after their wedding, Frederick William's brother, Louis, married Louise's sister, Frederica. Louise and Frederick William had a total of ten children, three of them died in infancy. In 1797, Frederick ascended to the Prussian throne. Frederick's reign was mostly marked by the ongoing Napoleonic Wars in which Louise encouraged her husband to defend Prussia against Napoleon's forces. Louise was known throughout Europe for her beauty and her intelligence. She herself negotiated with Napoleon Bonaparte for better terms after Prussia's catastrophic defeat during the coalition wars. Marked by years of wars, Louise died quite young in 1810 at the age of 34. After her death, Napoleon famously stated that Prussia had lost his best minister. She did not live to see the defeat of France. Frederick William remarried morganatically in 1824. He died in 1840 at the age of 69. The second pair of maternal great-grandparents were Charles Frederick, the Grand Duke of Saxe Weimar Eisenach and Grand Duchess Maria Pavlovna of Russia. Charles Frederick was born in Weimar on February 2, 1783. After his formal education ended, Charles Frederick started a tour through Europe, which brought him to the courts of France and Russia. At the age of 21, he married Grand Duchess Maria Pavlovna in St. Petersburg. The wedding took place in Russia as it was required to do so when marrying a Russian Grand Duchess. Maria was born on February 16, 1786 and spent her childhood in the Pavlovsk Palace. She was considered one of the most well-educated royal women of her time, while Charles Frederick did not excel in intelligence. After their wedding, the couple remained in St. Petersburg for the next nine months until they departed for Weimar. The marriage was politically important for Saxe Weimar, which was a rather unimportant, small and impoverished duchy at that time. Together, the couple had four children. Three of them survived to adulthood. In 1828, Charles Frederick became the Grand Duke of Saxe Weimar Eisenach. By then, the duchy was a cultural center in Central Europe. Maria was a supporter of the people. She especially committed herself to help other women. Charles Frederick reigned until his death in 1853. Grand Duchess Maria died six years later in 1859. 
Now let us continue with the maternal side of Wilhelm's family, starting off with his grandparents, Queen Victoria and Prince Albert, two historical figures most of you already know quite well. Victoria was born on May 24, 1819 at Kensington Palace. At the time of her birth, the chances of her becoming queen were quite low, but as she got older and her uncle, King William IV, remained childless, it became clear that she would most likely one day inherit the throne. She was therefore raised under close supervision by her mother. A month after her 18th birthday, her uncle died and Victoria became queen of the United Kingdom. After meeting her first cousin, Albert, a few times and falling in love with him, she proposed to him on October 15, 1839. Their wedding followed in February 1840. Prince Albert of saxe coburg and Gotha was born three months after his future wife in the then German Confederation. He was privately educated at home with his brother and later attended university. Victoria and Albert had a total of nine children, of which all of them survived to adulthood. Throughout his life, Albert was his wife's closest advisor. The couple managed to make dynastic marriages for most of their children. Albert died at the age of only 42 in 1861. Victoria, now a widow, mourned her beloved husband for the rest of her life, which would last 40 more years. She died in 1901. Now we are continuing with the first pair of maternal great-grandparents. Here we find Ernest I, the Duke of saxe coburg and Gotha, and his wife, Princess Louise of saxe gotha altenburg Ernest was born on January 2, 1784, in Coburg, when it still belonged to the Holy Roman Empire. At the age of 19, he took over the governing of his father's duchy when the latter became gravely ill. When his father died in 1806, his land was occupied by French troops due to the ongoing Napoleonic War. It was only after the Peace of Tilsit that Ernest's rule over the duchy could start. Ernest was supported by his brother-in-law, Grand Duke Constantine, who was the brother of Alexander II of Russia. At 33, he married Princess Louise of saxe gotha altenburg Louise was born in 1800, making her 17 years younger than her husband. Her mother died shortly after her birth, and Louise's father remarried. She grew up at the court of her father under the care of her stepmother. Despite Louise being considered as clever and beautiful, the marriage turned out to be unhappy. Ernest's infidelities lastly led to their separation in 1824. Two years later, their marriage was dissolved. Louise went on to marry her former lover. When their marriage became public, Louise was not allowed to see her two sons again. This deeply affected Louise, who suffered from the separation of her children for the rest of her life. She died at only 30 in 1831 of cancer. Ernest also remarried, this time to his niece. They had no children together. Ernest died in 1844 at the age of 60. The second pair of maternal great-grandparents and the last couple we are looking at today were Prince Edward and Princess Victoria. Edward was born on November 2, 1767, as the fourth son of his parents, King George III and Queen Charlotte. At the age of 18, Edward began his military training. Only a year later, in 1786, he was appointed a brevet colonel in the British Army. Edward would go on to also serve abroad, firstly in Canada and later in Gibraltar. Following the succession crisis in the United Kingdom, the 50-year-old Edward married 33-year-old widowed Princess Victoria of saxe coburg saalfeld She was born in August 1786 and was Christian Marie Louise Victoire. At the age of 17, she married the 40-year-old Charles of Leiningen. With him, she had two children. Her first husband died in 1814, after which she took over the regency for her young son. The wedding to Prince Edward took place in May 1818. A year later, Victoria gave birth to the future Queen Victoria. 
Only eight months after the birth of their daughter, Edward suddenly died of pneumonia. Victoria, aware that her daughter might one day become queen, devoted her time in overprotecting young Victoria. The system she established later got known as the Kensington system. Upon the ascension of her daughter to the throne, she was removed from young Victoria's side and was not allowed to visit her often. The relationship between mother and daughter would remain strained for the rest of her life. Victoria died at the age of 74 in 1861. If you've enjoyed this episode, let me know whose ancestry you would like to discover next.